I have a super versatile and quick way to add the perfect inner glow slash a glow in the dark effect to any image, person, or otherwise. I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and we're going to jump right in it today because my throat is on fire, haha, uh -huh, and I have 15 minutes tops before every sentence is immediately followed by both coughing and gagging. So at its core, all we're doing is taking an image, inverting it, uh, setting it to a consistent color, adding some contrast, and then setting that layer to screen, resulting in all the shadowy areas um, being filled with light. However, everything about this technique is adjustable and will hinge on what exactly you're trying to do with it. You can apply it to whole objects, keeping the layer set to normal, uh, giving that object a ghostly or surreal glowing effect. I've used it to create mermaid fins. It's great for adding a rim light to initially very dark areas, mimicking an um, under light effect. And it's great for objects or subjects with areas covered in flame or fire, creating a fantastic base where you no longer have to worry about shadows. And of course, in today's image, I used it to create an inner body glowing effect. Kinda like if you've ever held a super bright flashlight up to the tip of your finger, uh, that's kind of the vibe here. But basically, color, contrast, brightness, and shape can all be changed, and they likely will be changed when you try this effect on for yourself. These layers and settings are just the foundation or a starting point. I'm starting with a fully extracted image. We have our original subject and then a duplicate called Inner Glow. These exact settings are ideal for a fire effect, but it's just really a matter of color. You can use a hue saturation layer at the very end to completely change the color or adjust all the other layers individually to change the color. It really doesn't matter. I'll provide a download link containing a PSD that includes all of the adjustment layers seen here uh, because A, then you can play with all these settings yourself and kind of get a feel for how they work and interact with each other, but also because right off the bat we're starting with an adjustment layer that is no longer included in Photoshop, or it's a color lookup layer that's no longer included in Photoshop called color negative. You can absolutely get away with just inverting the layer using control I, and I'm sure there are other ways to get a negative color effect in Photoshop without this layer, but I just like using adjustment layers, so I have held on to it for years now. Next we have a brightness contrast layer set to negative 100 and plus 100. This is just to start pushing the darks darker and give the glowing areas more definition. I brought the layer opacity down to 68%, but you'll see later how this really doesn't matter. Next, a hue saturation layer to set the color. Make sure colorized is checked if you want a consistent color, and the color and saturation will 100% depend on what you want them to be. Next, a curves layer. Now again, these settings are tuned specifically for a fire-like glow, so I bumped up the reds and the darks and brought down the blues just slightly. However, you can bump up the greens instead, or the blues, or just delete it altogether. And finally, a color lookup layer set to edgy amber at 28%. Once again, ideal for a fiery glow. Now let's set our inner glow layer to screen and see what we have so far. She is incredibly bright and there is no defining rim light or glowing effect. And that's because the original image I created these exact adjustment layers for was much, much darker. An image's brightness, contrast, an object's exposure, or a subject's skin tone will all affect the layer settings. So I added a levels layer to crush the blacks and lift up the highlights. And I jacked up the contrast even more with a quick and dirty brightness contrast layer. You can use curves or any other method you want. You can also play with layer modes. A screen works well a a lot of the time, if not most of the time, but so do Color Dodge, Linear Dodge, and Lighten. It's always a good idea to cycle through layer modes and see what kinda does what. Also feel free to duplicate the inner glow layer and try mixing and matching different layer modes, especially if you want to intensify the effect. And like I said, the subject's brightness matters as well. So I used a curves adjustment layer to darken the subject, helping the glow effect pop a bit more. 
And from here, you'll just add a layer mask and either mask out the areas you don't want the glow to be applied to. Or what I like to do is invert the layer mask using control I and pinpoint the places I do want the glow to be applied to. I just find this to be a little bit more controlled and easier. And finally, you can add new layers below, above, or clipped into the glow layer and hand paint in some glowy details. Adding brighter or darker spots, uh, adding texture, anything really. Remember, the adjustment layers are just a base to start with. They aren't the end effect. The more you put into them, the more you're gonna kind of get out of it. Before getting into the speed art portion, and I give some tips and tricks for making the absolute most of this effect, uh, Neostock actually has a fantastic overlay bundle that would pair quite nicely with it. Uh, full of debris, smoke, and of course, fire PNGs. They are super easy to use, just drag and drop them. The smoke PNGs are especially lovely. Link down in the description. So we've seen the base effect. Now let's see how I actually use it in my real life workflow, not so much a tutorial workflow. You might notice I use a LUT file called Fire and Glow. This is a custom LUT of mine that was made using the exact adjustment layers we just created, minus the last two, which are specific to this image. I'd provide that, but A, I feel like having the separate adjustment layers are more educational, and two, there's something wrong with it. It brings my Photoshop down to a crawl. I have no idea why. So I just merged it with the duplicate subject layer and then used clipped adjustment layers to further refine it. So I have some troubleshooting to do to it before I can provide it to you guys. Sorry about that. You'll see me use a mixture of textures, uh, layer modes, and more adjustment layers to add shadows and intensify the glowy areas. Try and be precise where the light is hitting and make sure things, especially things like facial features, don't end up getting lost in this kind of ambiguous all over glow. When doing glow effects, the dark areas are just as important as they kind of add definition. But you do want to be wary of shadows, like the shadow being cast by the cigarette or her teeth here. I made sure to give those areas a bit of extra attention. Initially, the adjustment layers wanted to fill that harsh shadow being cast by the cigarette with complete light. That didn't make sense because that is what these layers kind of pinpoint. They're pinpointing the shadows and the darker the shadows, uh, the heavier the glow effect is going to fill them in. I also applied the same techniques to some of the textures, where I inverted the texture, turned it orange, and then set it to either screen, overlay, or color dodge. Adding texture and detail like that will go a long way. Frankly, I got a little bit bored halfway through the image and gave up. You are free to judge me. <laughs> this effect is all about playing with light and shadows, creating interesting shapes. So you'll see me do a lot of adding, then taking away, then adding again, a building things up slowly and trying to follow and intensify the natural forming shapes. They aren't always when I do these like how to slash speed arts, but this speed art is pretty significant to the how to portion. So make sure and watch it. I know you're like me and you want to skip all the way to the end, but do as I say, not as I do. <laughs>
And that is going to do it for today. Uh, feel free to tag me if you recreate this image or just use any of the techniques uh, because it's fun to see what people do with my ramblings. If you like this effect, you can see the same general ideas, but a bit more advanced used to create a super fun a neon hair glow effect. And I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.